time to choose between a greater and lesser evil. I'd rather not choose at all. Usually, though, the stakes are just too damn high. Sometimes in choosing a greater evil, you do good, albeit in a small way. When I chose to save the orphans of the swamp, I couldn't know Anna would die. And I never thought the Baron would leave his wife where she lay, find a rope, and hang himself. Most times, you make your choice and never look back. Witchers were made to kill monsters. It doesn't matter who posted the notice. The coin has to be right. That's all. Witchers don't debate. Their conscience plays no part. They just get on with it, then pick up the coin pouch tossed at their feet and set off on their way. Folk don't expect witchers to save them from themselves. Kira Metz was manipulative, a schemer, and loved every minute of it. She was also stubborn, even for a sorceress, but she had quite the gift. Boy, could she be convincing. Deep down, though, Kira was a little girl. She expected far too much of life and demanded instant satisfaction. Little girls end badly when they fall in with the wrong crowd. Few can refuse a sorceress, and Kira Metz certainly had her ways. But when she demanded the Mage Alexander's notes, I had to turn her down. Kira needed that, as she needed the impetus to start anew. She found it where she least expected to. Years later, known for discovering the cure for the Catriona Plague, she was thankful none remembered her time in hiding as a village witch. No one mourned for Horson Jr. In all his miserable life, he'd never helped a soul. Amusingly, once dead, he became a useful member of society. They say everyone deserves a second chance. Seems true enough. Horson got his. In a way. Sharing it. With a Doppler named Doodoo. -Doo. Orson Jr. wasn't a pious man. But there came a moment when he prayed to all the gods at once. For his life. Since the gods disliked Jr., they granted his prayer. Years later, he had just one regret. That at the moment in question, he hadn't surrendered to death. For he had had the courage then to do so. Courage he would never have again. They say ghosts are a manifestation of inner fears. Hauntings are said to be longing and loneliness, grown to vast proportions. There's no truth to that. It is true, however, that monsters can be as lonely as humans, and that to conquer one's loneliness, one must first conquer one's fears. Some manage to do just that. Long ago, to isolate themselves from a world of beasts, humans began building cities. But since beasts prowl within stone walls as well as they do outside them, this did not allay human fears. The truth is, walls guarantee no one's safety. The place where you lock yourself in and lock all else out, that's not your home. Your home is sometimes a place you travel long and far to find. Hatred and prejudice will never be eradicated, and witch hunts will never be about witches. To have a scapegoat, that's the key. Humans always fear the alien, the odd. Once the mages had left Novigrad, folk turned their anger against the other races, and as they have for ages, branded their neighbors their greatest foes. Street-side soothsayers, chiromancers, herbalists and healers. Though townsfolk had always sought their help, they'd never trusted them. Folk generally dislike those privy to their fears and weaknesses. The free city of Novigrad became a trap for all mages. Its merchants, craftsmen, and burghers held their breath when death came for those they despised. And they never expected the mages to take up arms, fight back. For ages, men had shed each other's blood in the quest for Skellige's crown. Politics as usual, just a difference of degree. Yet the bloody feast at Kerr trolled there was different. It was dishonorable, treacherous, needed investigation. More witcher's work. Work that culminated with the crowning of the Isle's new ruler. In Skellige, anyone can be king. All they need is the Jarls on their side. Sometimes a mediocrity gets just that, and the Isles get a ruler the clans don't respect. No one expected much of Svanriga, of Clan Twersech, but he went down in history as the founder of a dynasty. And 
as the king who united all the clans against Nilfgaard. 